Alison, if you spotlight yourself, then you're the only one that shows up in the recording ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, is that the same as pinning yourself or is that something different? Um, I know spotlight does. Pin might, pin might. Okay, well, I'm pinned, so I think that that should keep me as the main person anyway. So hi, everyone, and um, welcome to uh, Infinite Unfurling Bliss. These are the words that came to me about this morning star cycle of Venus that we're in. So what we're going to be doing today is looking, um, I'm just going to give an overview of where we're at in the Venus cycle, just a kind of reminder um, and give us a sense of the story, the bigger story that we're in. And then we're going to talk about the third gate, which is happening on Thursday. And it feels really amazing this. It's in the Jinky 46. So the civic frequency of 46 is e ecstasy. And when you read this gene key, um, Richard Rudd talks about it as a part of our genetics where spirit can deeply infuse into matter, i.e. through the body. And so it's a very exciting gene key, I think, for this next gate to happen and it's resonating with the throat chakra so the throat chakra as well is is like the the portal really between the upper and the lower the heart and the voice and the voice is like such a miracle um, of our human evolution this is one of the things that marks out a, a huge quantum leap it happened sometime in our evolutionary history that I can be here talking to you and we can sing and we can uh, actually change energy with the sound of our voices through mantras, for example. So the voice is pretty amazing and, and this feels like an important part of the journey that we're reaching into. Um, and it's been so intense since this Venus journey began and we've just had this incredible eclipse season. It feels like we're all being sort of squashed through our, into our shadow cells and into this, this new reality. It, it feels like literally sometimes going through a birthing channel as a collective together. Okay, so I'm going to um, share this little presentation that I've done, and then after that, we can have a chat about um, maybe how you've experienced some of the gates already, um, how has this Venus journey been for you, and um, your thoughts on, on what's coming. Okay, so hang on. Right, screen share. And so start the slideshow. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so I just wanted to mention, um, some of you may be watching this on YouTube. Uh, my name's Alison, and I'm a Gene Keys guide and an astrologer. And um, this, this little class happens on a wonderful platform called Soul Tribe Online. And for the month of November, you can have the whole month for free. So you can sign up, you can join in the miracle mantra that happens every day where we come together. You can experience being in the conversation live on these astrology classes and lots of other amazing things. And you can check out my website for readings and such like. Okay, so why follow venus at all you know why should this planet up there in the sky matter so much well this is some of the sacred geometry here on the slide so we have this um the geometry of the rose that's created 
um, as Venus moves in her cycles um, around the sun and she has these retrograde periods of 40 days every 18 months. So it's creating this incredible rose pattern within ourselves, especially when we consciously tune into Venus and um, invite her into our energy system. And we also have, we could call it the Vitruvian woman, the five-pointed star. So every eight years, um, Venus creates this five-pointed star with what's called the Venus star points. And we all have our own Venus star points. Um, some of us here know what those are. Okay, so the current pentagram point dates. So we started, um, we actually started Soul Tribe um, in the winter solstice of 2021 at the Venus retrograde. And this was the first one that we did here. Um, and this is Gene Key 54. I managed to leave my notes downstairs, but hopefully I remember. This is Gene Key 54 that we started in, in the line four, which is a really powerful area of the human design programming. Then the next one we did was October 2022. And this one was really important because it was the first Libra star point for hundreds of years. So we're moving into Venus in, is a ruler of Libra. It's all about an age that's coming in of, of beauty and, and art and high culture. And, Alison, that's yeah. an Aries, not a Libra, darling. Yeah, 29 Libra that one but you've highlighted march 26 fifth five degrees aries yeah yeah but i'm not talking about those two I'm i beg your pardon yeah i'm talking about the 18 capricorn one is when we started and then we did this 29 libra one so yeah the ones before <laughs> are before so uh yeah we haven't got time to cover everything today so yeah, anyway, so um, with the Libra star point, we're leaving um, Libra in Scorpio over a transition period, and we're moving into this lighter energy of Libra. Um, so this is the last one we did, August 13th, um, and this started off our morning star um, cycle that we're in now at 20 degrees Leo, and this was Jinky 4, and it's all to do with ancestral healing and forgiveness. Um, and in some ways, you know, this this intensification of conflict, I feel in the in the Middle East is a kind of like real coming up to the surface of things that have been there for a long time, but they really want to be looked at and and they're crying out for ancestral healing to take place at the, in this important part of the world. And then we're going to have the next Venus star point we're moving towards is at 14 Gemini. And this is Jinky 35, which is called Miracles and Wormholes. I love that. Okay, so this whole... Um, descent of Anana that we have with the morning star so she's in the morning as morning star suggests and she's coming down these seven gates and these gates are formed by Venus moon conjunctions and she's coming to meet the dark sister Arishkigal who is like our shadow sister but she's she's not just individual she's all that's repressed on our planet to do with the dark feminine, the divine feminine, you know, cultures that represent this more um, feminine right brained way of doing things like all indigenous cultures basically um, fall under this, um, you know, things that have been repressed in this kind of aeons where the left brain has been predominantly what we've been developing. So the journey so far 
So I mentioned the last Venus star point was in Leo, the gene key four line three with the city of forgiveness. And then we had the star chakra at four line one, also forgiveness. So we've got double forgiveness in this cycle. So anyone you're feeling the oomph with, um, this is important to focus on why you're feeling angry or unforgiving, because actually anything we refuse to forgive in another is a part of ourselves that we refuse to integrate. And so this is why I feel forgiveness is so important. Um, then we had the crown chakra gate, the first gate. This was in Gene Key 7, line 1 with the Siddic frequency of virtue. Um, then we had the third eye chakra, the second gate, which is 59 line two. Um, and this one was directly opposing Saturn in the 55 freedom. And then this one coming up, the third gate is, as I say, it's in 46 line four, the Siddic frequency of ecstasy. And it's in this quincunx, which is 150 degrees to Saturn. So interestingly, these last two have been in relation to Saturn. And Saturn is all about meeting obstacles and restrictions. And it's a hard planet to work with. And it kind of forces us to grow up Saturn um, and take responsibility for ourselves. And then the next Venus star point is this one in, in 14 Gemini. So we still got, you know, another four gates to go until we reach this in June 2024. So that's where the journey is heading. So I've, I felt into a name for this gate as the gate of heartfelt embodiment. Um, so I'm just going to point out a few important things that I feel uh, that we could pay attention to with this gate. So it's happening on Thursday, 9th of November. And here in the ninth house, I'll see if I can open this a bit. Are you going to open? No, hang on. Yeah, I can't open it anymore. Sorry, I'm just going back to it now. Um, I'm going to master this thing better one day. Okay, so here in the ninth house, this is for London, so we're not going to pay attention to houses particularly, but here we have Venus and the moon forming this gate at one degrees Libra, seven minutes. So we take the gate, <laughs> I've done it again, as the exact conjunction um, of Venus and the moon. And from that, we can work out what the um, gene key is for the gate, which is 46 line four in this case. So you can see that coming across to Saturn there is at north degrees of um, Pisces in the second house. So we have this kind of almost exact 150 degree angle. So this is much more subtle than the opposition at the last gate with Saturn. So hopefully Saturn has forced us through some big obstacles and constrictions and things we've had to kind of maybe put boundaries in place and now we reach this more subtle level where Saturn can act as an initiator um, you know kind of guide us into new um, forms new ways that we want to build the, our life ahead so what we've got also going on in Libra is we have the South Node conjunct Pallas Athena. So Pallas Athena is the warrior goddess in Libra. She's all about balance and equilibrium. And, and she will be asking us to kind of um, notice where we're going out of equilibrium and um, she doesn't kind of stand up for herself and be like mightily assertive like um, Pallas in 
Aries might be. She's more about, okay, let's make the adjustments here to ensure that the harmonious whole is functioning well. So Pallas may well call on us at this time to do that. And then opposite, we have the North Node um, at 23 degrees Aries. And Chiron is in quite a wide conjunction to the North Node. Um, but even though it's a wide conjunction, it feels like it's a potential time of deep healing available to us um, through Aries and our motivation, our direction in life, our purpose. We may feel um, that we get some clarity around that, especially if we're working very consciously with this gate. So we've got lots going on in Scorpio and um, the sun's in Scorpio. We've got we've also got Mars, Ceres and um, Mercury in Scorpio as well. So that's a lot of underworld energy going on there. And uh, yeah, and yes, yeah, so that's all opposing Uranus in Taurus on the other side of 21 degrees Taurus. So this, when you get Uranus um, in opposition to things, you can get this really like, also like deep flashes of clarity and insight and, and shocking events that um, blow reality apart and again we can think of things on the global scale with um, what's happening in the Middle East as, as there's a really shocking events that are you know no one can say they're just happening on the other side of the world because they're affecting all of us very deeply and um and, and things that have been hidden for a long time are coming to the surface. And that's what Uranus pushes things into the light. Um, yeah. And, and it feels like Ceres there is calling for nurturing. Um, we've got Ceres conjunct Mercury. So this is nurturing communication. You know, how can our way of expressing how we feel um, whether we're on one side, the other on various issues, or we're neutral, how do we share in a way that is not violent and aggressive towards other people, other humans, other life forms, even on the planet? So there's big, big, big things going on as we approach this gate. Okay, so um, things other things here Vesta and Astraea so Vesta's the priestess Astraea is all about um, she's like the goddess of the new golden age and she I always associate her with like art and music and writing you know the the high cultural thing there she's actually a um, esoteric ruler of Libra um, so so Vesta and Astraea are weaving these new subtle energies, geometries through art, ritual and intention, which is the realm of the priestess. Um, I've mentioned Uranus opposing, I've mentioned the South Node. Um, yes, so Hygieia is in the exact square to the sun. And this is about finding our rhythm from inside our body our awareness of when we're too aware of what other people are doing or when we're being pulled out of our body and out of our rhythm. So constantly feeling the urge, feeling the need to return to our center and to find our unique way of doing things. You know, it might be fast, it might be slow, it might be... Um, you know, it might be that we're more drawn into the day or the night. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's all about, it's very um, personal, our circadian rhythms. And also very seasonal. Um, so one, one thing that's really come through to me, and we're going to explore this more through um, the creative writing aspect on Thursday, is the revelation of Julian of Norwich, who 
um, has been very present with me actually through my dad's death because my my dad was a big kind of fan of hers and I'm a big fan of hers and and part of her vision is this mingling of love and sorrow um, into ecstasy. And this is all part of Gene Key 46, actually. It doesn't, I don't think it mentions Julian of Norwich, but it mentions this kind of almost like sorrow is so acute that you, uh, there's this merging of light and dark. And from that, this ecstatic experience comes um yeah and that was like so much on my dad when he was dying he um I'm gonna come out of this now he you know he had Parkinson's for nine years so he was like if there was an ever a death or an illness that sort of mimics a um you know a, a kind of very sacrificial sort of death a crucifixion because you literally cannot move anymore with Parkinson's so it's a it's a very very uh horrible illness you know but in even within that awful death there could be ecstatic moments and and we had an ecstatic moment where I sang um this hymn to him and and it was amazing, like just our eyes met and, and you could just feel this incredible ecstatic moment and um and the joy and the sorrow creating that. And um maybe we've all had some kind of experience of that in our lives. And I don't wish a sorrow on anyone, but actually the the ecstasy you can feel in that moment is pretty amazing as well so that's this venus moon gate coming um so i'm going to pause the recording now and just interested to hear you know themes so far this theme of forgiveness has been very strong through um this morning star phase perhaps you're feeling this thing about the ecstatic body the sorrow and the, and the love together um, just interested in in your thoughts and also insights I know some of you are really into astrology and gene keys and, and what your thoughts are about the meaning of this next gate in the 46 line four right so I'm going to pause the record mm, so thanks everyone for today and your sharings um, yeah, a lot there about the merging of divine masculine and feminine that I really resonate with. And, and that first gate we went through, um, Juno, goddess of the sacred marriage, was exactly conjunct that gate. And in the previous cycle of Venus, we actually also had this very strong theme. Um, I think that one started off with a Venus-Mars conjunction. So we've had this thing about the masculine and feminine through the last few cycles. And uh, yeah, just it's going deeper and deeper into our bodies. Um, this kind of understanding of gender, whole understanding of gender and perhaps over identification with our gender is shifting, um, but really honoring our human our humanness sometimes it feels like it's just about that honoring our humanness and how we can be the best humans on this planet and not be in self-hatred and self denigration um which our cultures tend to kind of uh, invite us into sometimes so self-love that's what we're doing here um so thursday we're going to be doing two hours. Um, Cynthia is going to be leading a healing part of the ceremony. Uh, Patricia will talk to us a bit more about um, the throat chakra. And then we're going to be doing some writing around the vision of love and sorrow of um, Julian of Norwich. So we're going to listen to the text and then right from that so something called lectio divino um 
sort of a way of working with divine writings or sacred text where we can really get into its meaning for ourselves. And then we'll be sharing that. So that's what we'll be doing on Thursday um, from 8 till 10 a.m. Pacific. So uh, we'll see you there. And um, some of us will be popping into Danny's uh, body talk now. <laughs> Yay! Looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, see you all on Thursday. Wednesday, we've, we're doing the evolution sphere as well at 8 a.m. So if you're doing that, see you there as well. What time is it? UK time. Uh, that one is um, 4 p.m. So, yeah, the, the ceremony is 4 to 6 p.m. in UK time. Okay, bye, everyone.